Investing in your 50s is a little different as compared to investing in your 20s because when you are investing in your 50s, if the market suddenly chibabu and crashes 18 levels underground, oh, oh. later you cannot retire, then you owe all your. That's why in this video, we will be talking about what are some finance strategies that you should have in your 50s, such as how to budget your finances, where are the best places to park your money, and of course, how can you invest your money. But before I start, to join my 8,000 members telegram chat group to discuss or ask any questions that you might have. Okay, before you even think about investing your money, you need to first make sure you have saved up enough emergency funds. What? Need emergency funds for me? Of course need lah. Emergency funds are important when there is emergencies, such as if you suddenly lose your job or you accidentally cannot accident, touch wood of course. But reminder yeah, you accidentally swipe a card and buy a new iPhone 15 Pro Max doesn't count as an emergency, yeah? The general advice is to save at least 3 to 6 months worth of living expenses as your emergency funds. So, for example, if every month you are spending $5,000, that means you will need to save up $30,000 as your emergency funds. But then, where should you keep your emergency funds? It's super important that your emergency funds can be accessed almost instantly when you need to. So, don't go and pile in fixed deposits and SSPs, yeah? even though they are giving some fantastic 3 to 4% guaranteed return. Instead, the best place to pile your emergency funds is in bank accounts. So far, the best bank account to use is still the UOB1 account. And yes, they are still good even after they have cut their interest rates. So let's say if you have 30k in the account, if you can spend at least $500 every month on eligible credit cards and credit your salary in, which by the way, can also be fulfilled via a pay now transfer, you can enjoy an effective interest rate of 3% per annum. And oh yeah, currently they have a big savings payout promotion which lets you earn an extra up to $1,000 worth of rewards. Otherwise, you can also check out OCBC 360. If you can credit your salary of at least $1,800, increase your average daily balance by at least $500 each month, and spend at least $500 on eligible OCBC cards, you can enjoy an effective interest rate of around 3.8%. Percent per annum. Though, OCBC may also cut their interest rates soon. However, if you are unable to fulfill the salary crediting criteria or credit card spend criteria, maybe because you have already retired or if you are a freelancer or a stay-at-home tai tai, in that case, you can check out Mari Bank. Currently, Mari Bank is giving a 2.8% interest per annum without any criteria though. This will only last till 30th June 2024, after which the interest will reduce to 2.5% per annum. Assuming they don't further nerf it, of course. Lastly, if you are okay with some risk, you can also check out money market funds. These funds invest in short-term fixed income financial products that are highly liquid, such as government bonds, cash, cash equivalents, and debt-based securities. You can find this in your usual low-cost brokers, such as Gumu Singapore, Tiger Brokers and Webu. The good thing about them is that there's no lock-in period unlike FDs and TBUs and they are currently giving around 3 plus percent 7 day yield. But the downside is that they are investments, so there are risks involved. Next, besides saving up for emergencies, you also need to save up for your short-term expenses such as your next vacation, eating Ting Tai Fung, or just enjoying life, which I like to call fun money. This is a concept called die with zero, where instead of just saving money your entire life, you also need to spend your money in order to enjoy your life to the fullest. According to the Household Expenditure Survey in 2017-2018, for a household living in a 4-room HDB flat, the average spending for recreation and culture, clothing and footwear, personal care services, alcoholic beverages and tobacco is $1,019 per month. But this was 7 years ago. So if we add in a 2.6% inflation over 7 years, the number would go up to $1,220 per month or $14,640 a year. So just like your emergency funds, you also need to save up your fund money for when you need it. And depending on when you want it, here are the best places to park it to earn some extra interest. If you want to use this money anywhere between 1 month to 10 years, you can consider parking it in Singapore Savings Bonds. The good thing about SSP is that you are able to redeem and get back your money within 1 month. The current 10-year average yield for SSP is at 3.06% per annum. Or if you know you need to use the money within the next 6 months to 1 year, you can check out fixed deposits and T-bills. For T-bills, the latest 6 months yield had a yield of 3.8% per annum. And for fixed deposit, the best rate is currently at 3.4%. Pro tip, 
you can head over to sgfd.newcities.org to check out the best current rates. Yeah? Otherwise, you can also check out Scythe Cash Plus Guaranteed, which is currently offering up to 3.8% per annum worth of returns. Quick pause, if you are looking to invest in the Singapore stock market, you can check out Weibo. Among all the Singapore brokers, Weibo has the lowest trading fee for the Singapore market at just 0.05% of the total trade amount with a minimum of $1.60. But if you are a new user, you will get to enjoy commission-free trades for Singapore stock trading for 3 years. Though, you still have to pay the platform fee of 0.025% with a minimum of 80 cents. Second, instead of having to trade the usual 100 shares, Weibo supports odd lock orders for eligible SGX stocks. This means you can trade with as little as 1 share. This makes investing in SGX stocks a lot more accessible to investors like you and me. And third, Weibo lets you earn a yield on your idle SGD funds, thereby optimizing the utility of your idle cash while you are waiting to invest your money. Weibo is offering upsize promotions in May. With Weibo's latest welcome promo, they have launched a new reward called USD Moneyboo Interest Booster. For my viewers who use my exclusive link to sign up and fund, you can get up to 8.4% USD Moneyboo per annum yield, capped at $250,000 US dollars for 180 days with estimated return up to 10,500 US dollars. This figure is computed based on the 7-day yield of the USD cash fund in Moneyboo as of 25th March 2024, plus the Moneyboo interest booster generated after 180 days from the first 250,000 US dollars Moneyboo subscription. Besides that, you will also get up to 1,050 US dollars worth of cash vouchers when you fulfill the requirements. This promo is for new users only. But if you are an existing user, good news. If you have not participated in any money boo promos before, you will get to enjoy a 3% bonus on your net cumulative deposit when you deposit fresh funds of anywhere between $10,000 US dollars and $250,000 US dollars. Subscribe at least $10,000 to Money Boo and maintain both your fund balances and Money Boo activation until 31st August 2024. Lastly, there's a new transfer in promo from which you could get up to another 2,000 US dollars worth of cash vouchers plus 500 US dollars trading vouchers by fulfilling the promo requirements. This is exclusively eligible for both new and existing users who sign up with my link in May and have not transferred shares in before. So if you are interested in trying out Weibo, do sign up to them using my link down below. And with that being said, let's get back to the video. Okay, after you have set your short-term savings, the next thing to think about is your retirement. Or more specifically, you got enough money to retire or not. So you need to make sure you have sufficient savings in your CPF. This, by the way, is called the Gui Lapis Strategy by 1M65, where CPF will give you a secure foundation so that even if you lose all your investments, CPF will still be there to make sure you still have enough money to retire. For this, you should try aiming for the full retirement sum which is $205,800 this year. With the FRS amount, assuming you are 55 years old this year, you will receive around $1,650 monthly payouts on the standard plan when you turn 65. According to the Minimum Income Standard Report 2023, this payout is almost enough to cover the basic standard of living for a single elderly person. So if you have not hit the FRS yet, you can top up $8,000 every year to your CPF until you hit the FRS. Why $8,000? That's because there's a CPF top up tax relief of up to $8,000. As to which account you should top up to, it depends on which life stage you are at the moment. If you are younger, the priority should be to top up to your MA first. That's because by hitting the basic healthcare sum, all MA contributions including the 4% interest from MA will flow into your SA then OA thereby supercharging your SA and OA. However, if you are older, like in your 50s, it's probably better to top up to your SA or RA as it will directly give you a higher payout in CPF life. For more info, you can check out this video here which explains the pros and cons of topping up your MA and SA first. But then, after you have hit the FRS amount, should you continue topping up to the enhanced retirement sum? It depends. The benefit of hitting ERS is that you will get a higher payout from CPF life. But the downside is that the payouts are fixed. So it is not hedged against inflation. In contrast, if you had just invested the money yourself, your investments will continue to grow and hedge against inflation. But of course, the downside is that there's volatility risk, so the payouts are not consistent. So you have to decide for yourself whether it's worth topping up the ERS or not. Check out this video here for more info. Okay, now that you have secured your emergency fund, set aside some fund money 
and secured your retirement with CPF, you are now finally ready to invest your money. But, but why invest the money? Why not just park it in the bank to earn 3 to 4% interest? The reason is simple. While a guaranteed 3 to 4% may sound attractive, this high interest will not last forever. And how low can interest rates drop to? Back in August 2020, before the interest rates went up, the maximum interest rate for UOB1 was just a tiny 1.2% per annum. And given that Singapore's average inflation is around 2.6%, inflation will be like nom nom nom, eat up your money every year. And that is why you need to invest your money to beat inflation. One popular strategy says that you should invest 110 minus H in the percentage of stocks and the remainder in bonds. So for example, if you are at age 50, you have 60% in stocks and 40% in bonds. And if you are in your 60s, you have 50% in stocks and 50% in bonds. This is to ensure that as you get older, you will slowly transition from the more volatile investments into safer investments. Because later the market crash, then you'll be like, huh, then not good lah, right? So this is not a hard rule, yeah? You can tweak it according to your preference. For Singaporeans, the good news is that we actually already have a bond component, aka CPF. So a huge part of that is already taken care of. So if you are looking to increase your bond allocation, you can either aim for CPF ERS, otherwise SSBs, T-bills or SGS bonds would also be a good alternative. Finally, let's talk about stocks. While it may be tempting to go into high yield stocks like Nvidia and try to hot big big, it's important to understand that when you are in your 50s, your goal for investing isn't to get rich, but rather it's just to grow the money so that you have enough for your retirement. Also, rather than trying to pick stocks one by one, one easy way is to buy all the companies at once. And the way to do that is by buying exchange traded funds or ETFs which holds a basket of stocks. You won't buy the wrong stocks if you buy all the stocks. This helps you diversify your holdings so that even if one or two stocks shiba boom and fail, you will still have the rest of your stocks to back you up. The first ETF you can check out is the S&P 500 ETF. This ETF tracks the 500 largest company in the world and historically, it has given an average return of 9% per annum. So you mean I can get an average return of 9% every year lah? Of course not lah. There are times where they can go up by more than 20% in a year. Other times, they can go down by over 30% in a year. Though, according to analysts, the future returns of the SME 500 may be lower in the future due to the already current higher valuations. While there are many SME 500 ETFs out there, the best one to go for would be CSPX. That's because it's an iron domicile ETF versus other ETFs which are US domicile. This offers some tax advantages, such as a lower 15% dividend withholding tax as compared to the usual 30% dividend withholding tax and no estate tax. Also, since CSPX is an accumulating fund, it automatically reinvests the dividends. This helps you save money as you don't have to manually reinvest the money back into the ETF and you will automatically have the magic of compounding. Next, while the SME 500 may give higher potential returns, the downside is that it can be more volatile and have currency exchange risk. So to avoid that, an alternative is to invest in the Singapore stock market. For this, you can check out Straits Time Index ETF which holds the 30 largest companies in Singapore such as your banks are, telcos are, and REITs. The benefit of investing in this ETF is that you will receive dividend payouts twice a year. Currently, the yield is around 4.5%. Though, the downside is that most of the holdings are matured companies, so there won't be a lot of growth. If you are interested in investing in this, you can either go with the Spider STI ETF or Nico M STI ETF, both of which are pretty much the same. Next, Lion Philip S3 ETF. This ETF lets you invest in a diversified portfolio of Singapore REITs, which own and manage various types of properties such as commercial, industrial, retail, and hospitality REITs. For example, you have Capital Land Asenda's REIT, Fraser's Logistics and Commercial Trust, Maple Tree Logistics Trust, and more. And since REITs are required to pay out at least 90% of their income back to their investors, the Lion Philip S REIT ETF has a rather high dividend yield of 5.9% per annum paid out twice a year. Anyway, there was a quick video on how to invest your money in your 50s. From setting out an emergency fund to allocating some fund money for holidays to investing in the stock market in your 50s. Hopefully, you found it useful. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.